On this episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored, we have a world-renowned plastic surgeon, Dr. Garth Fisher, a dear friend and famous celebrity plastic surgeon who will be joining us. We'll be discussing everything you need to know about plastic surgery and celebrities. You want to make sure to tune in, as I'm sure you're going to find this episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored super interesting. Today, I am, I am so honored to have as my guest, my first and only uh, mentor, Dr. Garth Fisher. So for those of you who don't know Garth Fisher, it's because you've been under a rock. Dr. Garth Fisher is the first true celebrity plastic surgeon. Those of you who have remember a show called Extreme Makeover, it was uh, the show rep was built around Garth, and um, he has taken care of some of the most high profile and difficult people in this city. And um, I started my practice with Garth Fisher, and he was the one that uh, sort of made the first gave me my first crack, my first at bat, so to speak. And uh, we've been friends and colleagues ever since. So Garth, thank you for coming and joining me. No one knows more than me how busy you are. So for you to carve out some time, I feel honored. How you doing? I'm doing great. And it's an honor to be here. And it's great seeing your face, your smiling face, and that uh, great personality. It's wonderful to be here with you. Well, I'm, uh, I, just, I think one of the things that I, I've learned so much of what I do today from you some of which obviously was directly from what you shared with me during our time together. But most of it was through osmosis and just observing because obviously when, you know, I remember I'd be, I'd be like this, I'd be this like young pup. I had just graduated. You were in the midst of, you know, the eye of the hurricane. You had, you were coming off of extreme makeover. You were operating 15 million cases a week. You had barely enough time to drink a cup of coffee and answer a few emails. And I'd always remember, I'd be like yeah. grabbing your, you know, heel of your, your pant leg going, Hey, 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 could you, can I, and you just like, I listen, kid, I love you, but you got to give me five minutes. And so I learned the art of osmosis, which is just pick it up from watching. And funny enough, I modeled my practice after you. And funny enough, there are days just, just last week, I was speaking to my office manager. And I closed the door to just answer like, five emails and I have 5,000. And I remember them opening the door and I said, do not open the door. I need to get caught up. This is what Garth used to do. He would shut the door and then if you'd open it, he'd be like, get out. So long and short of it is that I'm, I, I totally get it. And why I wanted to have you on was because I think people have this, I think people have this misconception about plastic surgeons. Absolutely, there are certain things about plastic surgery that's amazing and it's unique. But it does not come without so much sacrifice and so much difficulty. And I think no one would know that more than you, because here you are, arguably one of the most prominent plastic surgeons, not just nationwide, but arguably on the planet. And I have watched you and I know the sacrifices you make. So what I wanted to talk about is what's the day like in your life as a plastic surgeon without all the bells and whistles and all the fame and fortune, but rather the actual rawness of what it takes to get up every day and do what you do. Can you just tell us what you, what, what it's like and how much it takes to do what you do? Uh, yeah, God, that's a pretty broad question. And my life is a lot different now than probably when, when you were in the office and now you've achieved great heights and, and doing very well. But, uh, you know, I've got a more of a relaxed uh, attitude now, and and uh, but back in the day, you know, I don't know. I was thinking my daughter graduated from high school, and she said, you know, I've reached the twelfth grade. I'm going to college. I said, you know, at this point in my life, I graduated from high school. I had another fifteen years left, and uh, you know, which which really shows you. I mean, you know, for those fifteen years too, it's almost like being in a hospital prison, because as you know, you're studying, you're reading, you're you know, standing over a pool of blood in emergency rooms and operating rooms, and you know, surgeons have kind of the same thing, but um, uh, you know what an experience and what a what a what an amazing experience that was for all of us. And then you know a plastic surgery practice, you know it depends. You know I, I I remember what you just said about you know locking your door and trying to do your work. It's all about discipline and focus and the intensity of passion. Uh, trying to you know we're all competitive. Look, we all want to make hundred on our test, and if we made a ninety eight on our test, it's like we didn't care about the ninety eight. We're like, what did I miss? What did I miss? You know, and so. You know, you got to take on surgery like that too, and and try to make a hundred on every surgery, and deal with every patient. Try to be the leader around the pack, and that kind of guided me. It, it, it's exhausting, but but it's also fun because you get to do the work. And if you really enjoy doing the surgery, if you really love doing the surgery with your hands and making these people happy, and 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 picking the right patients that you enjoy, that it's 
it's not really work at all. It's just, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, like you, you know, we've done cardiac surgery, thoracic surgery, cancer surgery, emergency room surgery, plastic surgery. And, you know, of all that, I think plastic surgery is actually the most challenging because you don't have anything to share the responsibility of your result with. Like, you know, somebody could have a heart attack. You walk out and tell the family, you know, they had a clogged, uh, you know, coronary artery. It was a terrible heart attack. I couldn't save them. Or this person was in a car accident, man, they were going 80 miles an hour and it smashed everything. I couldn't help them. But you come out from doing a young daughter of an attorney and they have a bump on their nose and they say, why is it crooked? It's like, you know, shit, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's, you, can't blame, you can't blame it on anybody other than your own hands. And so, you know, there's a lot of stress and pressure. You're dealing with patients that are, you know, they're there to look their best. And you've got to have open communication. You've got to understand them. You've got to communicate clearly with them. You've got to believe in what you're going to do and the result and hopefully turn them down if you don't. Uh, you've got to manage their expectations. Uh, it's a lot of hand-holding. It's uh, this is a very, very difficult career. It, it is. And I think, and I think you know, Unfortunately, or fortunately, plastic surgery has been in the media a lot over the last 15 years. And you actually were the originator of the show, Extreme Makeovers, which was, which we talked about on many occasions while I was in the office, which was really controversial. I mean, in, in hindsight, much like what we see on Instagram in terms of what's considered soft porn, you showed a, a woman on a commercial in the 50s with her bra and it was like, oh my God. So back in the day when you did Extreme Makeover, which was a show about patients' journey it was a lot of controversy around you being on TV and doing patient doctors and things of that nature. And But people think that it's all fun and games and it's like the easy part of medicine. What time do you get up every morning? I'm going to ask you some pointed questions. And now, don't refer to your now, I don't want to say the end of your career because you're hardly at the end, but maybe you've, 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 you've managed. But let's say in the peak of your career, when you were doing kind of where I am now, where you were when you were doing staying and doing your um, the naked truth? What time would you get up in the morning? Oh God! If you go to Extreme Makeover and the Naked Truth, when I was doing those videotapes and just building, 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 I mean, I was getting up at six, seven in the morning. I was going. What time were you getting home? Uh, God, I was getting home at probably eight o'clock at night. I'd eat dinner. Um, I'd spend a couple hours with my family, and then I would be working on these videotapes till two in the morning, and get back up at six, seven. Right. Uh, I mean, I was working around the clock. How uh, many days a week did you work? Uh, operated five, six days a week. Um, I've always, op well, actually operated, I, I worked from Monday to Friday, but sometimes I'd have to operate on Saturdays, you know, for you know, shows and different things. But I, I operate uh, five days a week. And yeah. that's a bit, it's been like that for me since 1992, though. Right. So, so here you are, you're getting up. And I know because I've been in the operating room with you and I do it myself. People think, okay, you get up quite early in the morning, you get up, you go into the office, you're operating all day, and then you barely eat. And then you get up and you come home, you spend some time trying to be a good dad or a good husband or whatnot. And then you got to finish the day. The day is a yeah. thousand emails, 454 calls, 27 patients. Then you have to deal with ever ne the inevitable fire. The fire is the patient who comes home yeah. about the bump on their nose and the lady who's yeah. Yeah. complaining that this, that, the other. And then, oh yeah, by the way, uh, I'm doing this project called The Naked Truth, which would be the equivalent of this podcast. I mean, here I am Saturday morning. I'm literally, when I say full following in your footsteps, The Naked Truth was your way of getting people the information they needed to know. You called it The Naked Truth. I call this plastic surgery uncensored, which is just about being transparent. And you're doing all that at the time. So everyone's like, oh, this is, look how great Garth Fisher's life is. And it is great, but it is not without its sacrifice. And I know that you have worked incredibly hard. And so you, you know, you, you rep represent a certain subset of plastic surgeons. So let me ask you about, let's shift gears to like, oh, but you know, you're taking care of this sort of high end, super elite patient population, arguably, let's say even celebrities. They're actually very difficult people. They're lovely people. We're not talking about them from a bad standpoint, but what are some of the challenges, not some of the benefits of taking care of very elite people. Well, you know, the common thread to an unhappy patient is a result they don't like. And so the most important time you have is the time in the operating room that, by the way, for me, has been the least stressful part of my life. When I'm in the operating room, it's not stressful at all. I enjoy it. I love it. The stress part is the emails and all this other stuff. But the elite people, these people, you know, they want to be seen now uh, in front of everybody else. They want to get in first, uh, for everything. And they want you to drop your, whatever you're doing and even come to their houses. And, you know, they exert a lot of pressure because they are who they are and they don't follow rules as well. You know, these are all generalizations. 
uh, you know, and there were a million copies of uh, pictures of them and reels of, uh, you know, videos and movie clips and everything's in, you know, magnification. So they're very critical of everything else and they're in a competitive environment. So there's a lot of intensity regarding that. But what I learned a long time ago is you got to stand your ground and treat them like everybody else. And if they want to come, they come. If they don't, let them go. Because the more they're able to fall within that that little parameter that you provide for them, the more happy you're going to be. And I'm not going to let anybody, you know, push me into a spot where I'm going to be off, you know, off my happy spot. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm not going to be pushed around like that. And, you know, for what we do in our careers, we're just as important as they are in theirs. And so, so I, I learned that I just not going to bend anymore. And I, and I, and I haven't, but, but, you know, it's, it, it's now for me, it's about, you know, I've done every procedure. I'm comfortable with everything. And, you know, it's about the people I'm operating on. They're, they're coming into my surgical family and, and I want to be happy. I want to enjoy being with them. I don't want to be like, oh my God, this person, I don't want to talk to them. So I, I turn a lot of people down. I select those people out just to keep my life better. And that's what I've learned a lot. Yeah. And I think that's such, I mean, you hit on so many points, the number one of which is that, you know, it, if somebody's high profile, um, it creates unnecessary pressure and it tries mm. slowly pushes you outside the boundaries of what you know to be right. Fact of the matter is yes, that your post, op, your post op day number X, I don't care that you have to shoot a film. I don't care if you were my exactly. sister, I would tell you to stay home and let the sutures heal. And so it, why I say it's difficult to take care of these people, because the normal patient will abide by your rules and a patient who is accustomed to doing what they want will push you. And it really tests your ability to stay true to what you know to be the case. And the fact is when things don't go well, you're ultimately to blame. You can't go, well, I told you, and you they just don't listen. So it says sure. a lot about your integrity sure. in that regard. The second is just the idea that you want to select people that you want to, you know, we always say you want to select someone that if something goes wrong, you can tolerate them. You know, when everything goes right, everybody's happy. Even the person you can't tolerate, they're happy. So, yeah, yeah. they're a little, little difficult. That's true. But if the shit hits the fan and you got to be in bed with them for the next six weeks, you're going to be miserable. And so, you know, people think, oh, well, Garth Fisher, now he's at a point where he can be selective. I'm certain, because I know, you're selective from the very beginning. I've never not been selective because you won't make it to that level if you're constantly swinging at pitches that you should never have swung at. Your batting That's average exactly will be true. down. You'll have exactly a pretty true. batting average. So I think those are really all very, very key points. And I think that people underestimate the, the, the resilience required by a surgeon to stand their ground and, and know what's right for them. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back. And I want to ask you something that I think is so, I don't even know, it's social media and the evolution of plastic surgery through TV and media in a different, like a whole new stratosphere. I mean, you were basically at the peak of your career when TV was at its peak. Now it's shift gears and I'm dealing with social media, not that you're not, but at a different level. And I wanna hear your input after this break. So make sure to tune into the second half of Plastic Surgery Uncensored with Garth Fisher. All right, welcome back to the second half of Plastic Surgery Uncensored. Your host, Dr. Roddy Raban. I'm here with my dear friend, Garth Fisher. And I wanna to talk to you about social media. And you know, you take care of a um, uh, uh, patient population that, as we had discussed earlier, can be demanding. Now you pour gasoline on this fire and you add social media to it. What have you seen? What's the evolution you've seen? What what are the what from your vantage point now that you're a more senior surgeon? What have you seen in the evolution of plastic surgery? Well, I'll be honest with you. I I have a website. Um, I think people find me from that and from other people. I I don't know if I've ever gotten people from social media i i i've got an instagram i play around with personally i've got one that i haven't touched professionally for probably a year um and quite frankly the patients that come to me you know they want to be private but they don't anybody to know and they would never do anything they'd rather pay to not be known than to get something for free so i just i'm not in that pool of people that want to do social media for surgery um, so I, what, just, about the, what about the request? Not so much what you've done using social media, because that actually is a good point. There's two parts of social media. There's how the physicians have manipulated and used it. And we both know who those people are and that's their patient population. That's their practice. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not something that necessarily applies to you and me, but the second half is all the 
craziness that people, I mean, Facetune for God's sakes. I mean, people come in and they're like, wow, I want my waist to be size three and my ass to be size 40. Like, so I'm talking about how have you noticed patient requests, desires, demands? It's got to have changed over the last 15 years as a result of all this nonsense. What have you seen on that end? Well, I think, you know, I think, well, listen, plastic surgery has become more acceptable for men and women. I think the, uh, you know, patients, plastic surgery IQ has been raised. I think people are obsessed with Instagram looking around and trying to look like this or look like her. And who did she go to? What did she have done? And, you know, the, uh, the biggest problem I've seen in our entire field, to be honest with you, uh, is that there's such an increase, you know, you, you think that there's a great incre- improvement in technology, but it's really just an improvement in marketing angles. And so, you know, the, the anatomy is the same. You know, there's just some things that we can do and we learn, but it's not like a can opener, to your, can opener you build and, you know, and then you and I are sitting in a room at works and say, okay, we're going to do this. And, and now you've got a can opener for everybody for the rest of their life. Well, a medical procedure, it takes four or five years to evaluate the results of something sometimes. And if you get on this, this curve of like, oh, I was on Instagram, I saw this patient, they, they look so beautiful and maybe it was just marketing. And then you got all these people doing it and, and it's uh, not really you know, it's, 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 it's just a marketing angle. It's not improvement in innovation at all. And, and it leads to bad results sometimes. So I don't know. I, it, I'm, I'm just, I'm not on the Instagram trail at all, you know, really. So for patients, um, but I, I think that from what we do as surgeons, we just always, what is the best thing in our patient? What's going to give me the high best quality result. And when we get, we, we constantly get asked by, you know, publicists and all these, uh, you know, beauty uh, outlets. What's the newest, latest? What's new? Best. What's new? Shit. Ask me what's the best. Don't ask me what's new because what's new, we don't have any idea. We're just trying, you know, you got to go buy 20 different lasers because, you know, somebody's got a new laser. It's just ridiculous. So what's the best? What's time tested? Where are you going to get the best result? What's going to make that happy patient? You know, it's not about marketing to get the patients. It's about making each patient happy that's going to send you another one. That's what it's about. Yeah. And I think, I mean, these, these are things that I've echoed. And I, it's, you know, when you're, when you're built of a certain fiber, the, the way you approach life is going to be the same, irrespective of the decade in which you're practicing. That's so, true. You know, I am constantly frustrated. And part of the reason I have this podcast is, I mean, I'm so sick and tired of hearing, oh, thread lift, this lift, lip lift, this, that. I mean, it's, you're barraged with it. And you spend more of your time educating people what they shouldn't do and what they should do then say hey listen this is what you need and you know our publicist comes to me as they're supposed to and they're constantly haranguing me for new ideas and the reality is that there's probably 50 surgeries that were invented 50 years ago we've modified them i would argue maybe 15 or 20 percent as you said the anatomy hasn't changed and then you just you just spend the rest of your career getting really good at doing something that was invented a while back, but getting really particular and nuanced based, not coming up with something new every year. And you have to fight the current of the marketing phenomenon. I don't want to say you're out of it, but you know, you are in a different era and you're in a different space right now. But for me, I'm sort of in the current of this current way of plastic surgery. And it's, uh, you know, I mean, the podcast for me is an opportunity for me to just vent. I mean, I'm just constantly like, well, you're, Roddy, you've always been a very ethical guy. You're brilliant. You're a great surgeon. And, you know, I, as I know you will, you keep your nose clean and you're going to do what's, what's what you're going to be honorable about everything. And you just have to avoid falling into the bad current and, and going along with all that stuff and, and use your podcast to educate, educate people. And make, res- you know, if your results are great, which they are, you just keep doing what you do. And if they're not, you adjust them, you learn something else. But, but I know what path you've always been on and I know what you stand for. And, and I'm very glad you're doing this podcast because it really is, uh, you know, educating patients and that, that's the best thing you can do. And just, yeah, and I, just I, honest, I, honest voice. Yeah, and I agree with you. And I think, you know, I modeled my, as I said to you before, you know, this isn't to bring you on and have an homage for you. But I think everybody always, you know, obviously the people that listen to this podcast, listen to it because they perhaps find what I have to say to be useful. And I always find it interesting, you know, where people get their training and their education, their guidance. And, you know, early on in my career, I, you know, I, you don't reinvent the goddamn wheel. That's not bright. Bright is to take the wheel that was invented and perhaps refine it to match your needs. But at the end of the day, the wheel was already invented by someone. So, you know, I, I modeled my practice after your practice in that it was clearly a successful functioning practice. So I have no lasers. I have no gimmicks. I don't do anything, you know, every week, something new. And I rely heavily on the craft of 
the surgical arena and reproducibly excellent results. And, and for me, it has been successful as it was for you. And I think that that's something that we want to reiterate on the show is that the, the and I hate to use the word old fashioned because it would suggest that it's antiquated, but it is old fashioned. It is the tri time and true kind of approach is really at the end of the day going to st stand the test of time and all this other garbage. Literally people get procedures done and two years later, nobody like people are like, what you had what done? It was like the greatest fad. So I commend you for having paved the way. I appreciate that you allowed uh, me to pick up some of those items along the way. And I carry the torch with this podcast as you did with the videos you did. And I know how challenging it was at the time and the strain it put on your life as it is for me. And, but I always feel like, shit, someone's got to keep carrying the baton. So uh, challenge accepted. And I, uh, and I, I, uh, I appreciate you uh, being here today. Is there anything else you want to tell the listeners who are like, galvanize I always refer to you as the Michael Jordan of plastic surgeons I would probably be like you know the Steph Curry which is the new version so anything you want to leave uh, let the let the li uh, listeners know Michael uh, Michael I don't know I'm um, I'm still making my jump shots my three-pointers I, I enjoy what I do the easiest part of my day is operating and you know I've I've just been so blessed and thankful I've you know I uh, thanks to everybody that you know, thanks to everybody. I, I just, I, I don't have really anything to say other than, and, and, and it's been so great knowing you and watching you and, and seeing how, you know, you're just, you're just a tremendous guy and a tremendous surgeon. And, um, and, uh, you know, we'll have to go out and have a coffee sometime. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd love that. So you guys can find Garth Fisher. I mean, I don't, he doesn't need any introduction, but um, what's your handle, Garth? Just, I know you're not much of a social media guy, but I think some people will be curious. So, I know it's well, my private, page. my private page is at Garth MD, G A R T H M D, and then there's, you know, I think I don't even know what the other one is. Maybe Garth Fisher MD. I I haven't looked at that. But anyways, your website is GarthFisher.com. Uh, yeah, w yeah. W so people w can find you there, and then I mean, Jesus Christ, you just Google Garth Fisher, and there'll be no 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 uh, no shortage of information. But at any rate. Really appreciate you coming. I know your, your day is like, I, I can only imagine. Uh, it, was a, it was an honor to have you and uh, we'll hope to make you proud. Honor to be here. Thank you very much, Roddy. I appreciate it. All right. That was another episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored with Dr. Roddy Raban today with Garth Fisher. Tune in next week to, I'm sure, another exciting episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored.